This planet was previously thought to be impregnable, but I have just successfully penetrated the atmosphere. I will now begin drilling the planet so I can get an early start on the railing process. Uh-huh, that's what you're here for. So I feel like I have done everything in my power to point out the fact that I am going to be making a penis in this game. So, some of you may have shown up to this video assuming that I'm going to be making a penis that I drew out on graph paper and like pre-prepared everything about, and I have very bad news for those people, but very good news for everyone else. Ah, this is a good place to start, and now we can begin. On the greatest engineering feat the modern world has ever seen. The World's Fair is just around the corner, and construction has already begun on the greatest feat of penile engineering the world has ever seen. In the studio, I have the pleasure of interviewing Dr. John Bone, Head of Logistics, and Dr. Jacob Wiener, Head of Engineering. So, Dr. Bone, what got you interested in this project? Now you see, we've got all these towers. The New York Pavilion, the Tower of America, the Space Needle, all feats of engineering in their own right. However, to me it's almost sidelining the point. I feel like they're simply not direct enough. They're phallic, sure, but it always seems to me that they could be more phallic which is why building a gigantic penis on the side of the Earth really struck me as a project I'd be proud to be attached to. And, uh, Dr. Wiener, same question. I was an engineer in Germany for many years. I've worked my way up to heading several projects. And I feel I made great contributions to... Well, I suppose in the end it doesn't matter who I was working for now. This giant penis is a boon for all to share. It belongs to all of humankind, and that is who I represent. Now, Dr. Bone, with a project of this girth, where do you even begin? Now, I've heard a lot of murmurs around the international community about starting at the head or the tip, but we're Americans. We think a little differently. We start at the balls and work our way up. I mean, if you ask someone who isn't in construction what they think we spent the most time on, they're probably going to say they spend a lot of time on the chef, but no, 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 not at all. What we're giving the most attention to in reality is the balls. The most important part of the project in this stage is the balls. They are more or less the producers of everything that goes into the penis. It is where everything is conceived, more or less. So the balls have already taken a lot of time and a lot of hard work, but me and the boys feel like, you know, we're making history. It's gonna take a lot of time and a lot of hard work, you know? Adam wasn't fucking built in a day. Okay, well, well regardless. Now that the balls are complete, construction of the shaft should go very easily. You know, when history looks back on this stage of the project, what I think it will remark on the most is what really got hard was the balls. At this stage, it's going to be a very simple penis. Two types of materials are refined, they make three things, these three things are built into two things, those two things turn into one thing, and that one thing is expended for research. The post-ball logistics are actually very, very simple. You could describe them to a group of school children. Things go up, stuff comes out. Now, we understand that the cockhead, as it stands, is very rudimentary, and you know, it's more just there to be. What we think is really going to wow people at this stage is the jizz stream. Ladies and gentlemen, we are now getting our first aerial look of the first iteration of the Penis Project. And in this reporter's opinion, it is a beautiful, beautiful dick. The mouthfeel must be incredible. Now we've received some complaints from the international community about the copper ball being slightly smaller than the iron ball, and that is something we're going to touch up in Mark 2. The team is happy with Mark 1, yes, but uh, we're not celebrating so much. I mean, the morale is high and the energy is good, but the excitement is for possibilities of the future. We are having a party for the completion of Mark 1, yes, but really it just showed us that this project is possible and we are itching to get to work on Mark 2, which the team has taken to calling the Hawk. Mark 2, or the Hog as we've taken to calling it, is where things start to get interesting for the Shaft. The balls are more or less doing what they will be doing for the entirety of the project. The Shaft is going to see a massive extension. Now, it took us a little bit, but we finally found the quarry that has been filled with stone. And now, stone is obviously going to be an integral part of this process, because if you want a rock-hard cock, you're gonna need some rocks. And also, we need the silicon for, like, the, uh, the electronic parts and stuff. The stone and silicone will simply go on a track to the shaft, essentially injecting it with blood, which will help it grow. 
So with a game like SimCity or City Skylines or even RimWorld, it's almost always better to go into renewable energy like windmills or solar panels or dams because they're usually cheaper and make people happier. And the downside is that the early game ones provide less power than oil and coal. But oil and coal slowly poison people and basically have a timer on how long they'll last. This game has, like, the complete opposite philosophy, though. Sure, you could use renewable energy, but it's significantly less efficient than coal and oil, and while there is a limited amount, it'll still output for, like, 10 hours of gameplay. There's no ecological downside because you're a robot, and you'll end up with an abundance of both anyway if you don't guzzle it for fuel. You'd be a chump not to use it. I feel like maybe this is where I should mention the game was made in China. I think it's a good point to point that out. Ladies and gentlemen, the alien robot Envirobot is about to give us his statement as to why he came to Earth. Please be silent at this time. Greetings, humans. I come from a faraway planet. I was engineered by beings not unlike yourselves. These beings chopped down forests and burned coal until their environment was entirely destroyed successfully. I am here to share their wisdom so that you might reach such heights. Well, Envirobot landed in my yard a few months ago and I've been showing him the ropes. Stealing is wrong, ice cream tastes good, killing is bad. He's been a little slow to pick up on some of it, but wouldn't you know it, he picked up on that ice cream thing right quick. There may be some discussion and disagreement among the scientific community about Envirobot's methods, but it is clear that they are proven effective. As far as the long-reaching effects of those methods are concerned, well, I'm a doctor of engineering, so that's not really my problem. There were similar concerns at my last job, and those weren't my problem either. Oh no, don't get me wrong. I understand the concerns about Envirobot from my biologic and climatologically minded colleagues, but from my perspective, as a logistical engineer, sometimes a tree gets in the way of one of my tracks and it takes a long time to cut it down. So, you know, to me, Envirobot is making some interesting points. The next stage of the penis will require the creation of yummy, yummy refined oil. Guzzle it all down. Mmm, good. If the air starts to make you cough, that means it's working. <laughs> no, you sure do love your refined oil. No, 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 stop that. That'll set the forest on fire. Yes! No! It was a huge pain in the ass, but we finally got the oil refineries up and running, and we're outputting a lot of graphite, so we're finally getting the red cubes out the door. And the penis, it, it, it looks okay. Oh, I, I guess. The initial iteration of this is something we were proud of, yes, but it is exceptional on the production end. But, uh, well, there is something about it that I think we all felt could use improvement. Now, at this point, we knew what we had was good. Got everything where it needed to go, and it was really expedient. A model of modern engineering, but something was wrong. We were all feeling it, and to put it simply, it just isn't enough of a penis. And that's the entire point. If we're not making a penis, then what are we doing? You see, the American people are not going to be pouring through our design documents. They're not going to be saying, uh, it would be more efficient if you did it this way or that way. No, they want to see a giant penis, and that's what we've set out to give them. Put it simply, we need a cockhead. It's gonna make the cubes travel slower, but at a point, who cares? We're not making a fast cube transportation system, we're making a goddamn giant penis. Well, to be candid, the boys don't really like the fact that they had to tear everything down and then build it back up, but, uh... Well, Mach 2, I mean, that's a penis! Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Mach 2 of the penis, the hog, in its completed form. What a truly radiant dick. But they're not done yet. The final iteration, Mach 3, has begun construction already. With Mark II, we really hammered out our philosophy in regards to efficiency versus penis. Penis comes first, even at the cost of efficiency, which is why we've decided the balls simply need to be bigger. You see, this shaft has simply reached a size that is so massive that our first iteration of the balls won't work anymore. The resources, for instance, that we are consuming require bigger balls to maintain. Calm down, calm down, listen, listen! I get it, okay? I get it. I know we don't want to fucking have to go back and rebuild the balls, but the thing is, if we're gonna make the fucking ninth wonder of the world, 
How the fuck are we gonna do that if it's got tiny, tiny balls? There, there are only seven wonders of the world. Ex excuse me, sir, did you fucking forget about King Kong? Hey, everyone, this guy forgot about fucking King Kong! Andy, I have discovered a problem. You cannot see the balls from space. Ooh, yeah, that's a problem. Yeah, I'll tell the boys about that one right away. As a reward for my discovery of the problem, I would like to consume a baby deer. <laughs> In Pyrobots, we call that a fawn. Fawn. Maybe Envirobot has as much to learn from humans as humans have to learn from Envirobot. The solar panel concept was actually our construction manager's idea. It solved both our visibility problem as well as fix our power problems. During the day, the solar panels are really reflective, and during the night, they got these big bright lights on them. And I mean, we already had, like, the windmills or ball hairs surrounding the balls, so it was like, pretty obviously the logic. I think this was a bad move. What they should have done instead is had multiple constantly burning oil fires. We have more or less been able to complete this shaft for a long time. Since we started work on Mark 3, most of the work here has been making the process go smoothly, which requires a lot of catching up. The logistics of the Mark 3 have been difficult. I'm spending a lot of time tripping over myself, more or less, because to build outward effectively, we need to build inward a bit, so that instead of making everything by hand, the penis provides all that we could ever need. The final iteration is more or less a combination of the two distinctions between Mark 1 and Mark 2. Mark 1 had a stream of G's, Mark 2 had a fully formed cock head. To reach our end goal with Mark 3, we needed both. Now, the previous two iterations were about research cubes, proceeding forward with the project, but Mark 3 is about something more profound. Some of what they're having me build? Man, these are things that a 12-year-old kid just like, hopes and imagines he'll get to build working in construction. And I ain't even talking about the giant penis pot. Mostly. The cock head is the input, and the jizz stream is a field for the output. And with this much output, we need a lot of cannons. Dr. Bone has assigned me a very special role. I shall be the penultimate penetration of the penis. I will guzzle yummy yummy refined oil and make my way to the stars. Destroying the environment as I ascend. I'll miss you, Envirobot. We had some really good times, but being shot out in a just stream into space is where you belong. <laughs> Do not cry for me, young Andy. Simply hold dear the memories we had together, and keep my message of indiscriminate harm close to your heart. Ladies and gentlemen, Envirobot has just lifted off, and Dr. Bone is going to give a statement on the final iteration of this project. Ladies and gentlemen, the third iteration is complete, and I am more than pleased to announce that man has finally achieved the goal he set out to achieve since first he looked out to the stars. To fire his load into the cosmos and impregnate the sun.